right, today we're going to work on a pumpkin fudge. I'm tempting fate really badly. Um, I got everything together. Went to look for my candy thermometer. I can't find it anywhere. Um, I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna use a little laser thermometer and see what we can do. Because you don't, when you're making candy, you wanna to get to certain stages. And for this fudge, we only want to get up to about 235 degrees. I'm also tempting fate because I'm not supposed to make making fudge or caramels, things like that. My great grandmother, my grandmother and my mom told me when it's raining outside. Um, we're right in the middle of a tropical storm watch. We have some bands going through. It gets really windy. Right now it's kind of calm. So it is raining though. I'm going to see how this turns out because I got everything ready. So I just want to see what we can do. So I've got my butter in here. It's a stick and a half of butter. I'm going to before the butter starts burning, we're gonna put in a cup and a half of brown sugar. We're gonna put in, where's my white sugar? We're gonna put a cup and a half of white sugar in. Looks like I need to fill this. <clears throat> definitely need to fill this. And there's about a cup and a half of white sugar. Get this out of our way. We're going to put in the pumpkin puree, which is about, uh, I think, three-fourths of a cup. We're going to combine all of this together, bring it up to 235 degrees, and then we'll add some other ingredients to it. Well, we got half and half, about three-fourths of a cup of that. I'm going to put all these ingredients, just in case I say it wrong here. Put that down in the comments and also a link to the recipe. Um, we're going to use Earlier I showed you in another video making my own pumpkin spice. We're going to use a whole tablespoon of pumpkin spice. There we go. Put that in. And about a half a teaspoon of salt. I'm using a Himalayan pink salt. And these four things, the marshmallow cream, the um, vanilla, the marshmallow fluff, and the white chocolate chips, we're going to wait. Put that in after we get it. We got it on about a medium heat. It's coming together really quick. Let me get a whisk. Tearing everything up. I told you, I'm, I'm really tempting fate today in making this. Get that stirred a little bit and get this knife off the floor. Like I said, we're going to take this up to about 235 degrees. Exactly 235 degrees. And right now we're at about 163. If this works, we're going to find out. It's a little experiment today. Now I know if I can make my fudge when it's raining, and if I absolutely have to have a candy thermometer or I can use my laser thermometer. Just a little bit more now that everything's mixed in together. Now I am using a very heavy bottom pan. You don't want a light bottom pan, a thin pan, because it's going to heat up too fast. It's going to scorch what's in there. So you want to make sure that you have a nice, heavy, thick bottom. I love this time of year, all the way through Christmas. Growing up, this is when mom and grandma and my great grandma made their caramels, their pumpkin breads, all kinds of cookies. My mom made Jim Dandy cookies. I think she's doing a video on that. They're, they're just an amazing little cookie with chocolate, marshmallow, maraschino cherry, and some fudge frosting. Now, great, my great grandmother, Blanche, used to make the best caramel. She made it fresh all the time. Every year, we never had any kind of store bought caramel. We're up to about 185, and one up to 235. Um, but we use that caramel for everything. Mama used it in different recipes. I know around Chris or um, Halloween, she always used it to make candied apples or caramel apples. Um, caramel is just delicious. That I do make, I use it a lot when I'm making turtles or if you're from the Savannah area, I think they call them gophers there. I grew up, they were called tur turtles. Now I do have a dish over here prepared. It's a nine by 13. I did line it with a little bit of parchment paper. That's just gonna make the fudge come out a little easier. I'm also gonna spray that so it comes off of there a little bit easier. We're up to about 201. Let's get up to temperature. Let me get my spray out. If 
you do want to continuously keep going back and stirring this as you go. So like I said, you don't want it to scorch to the bottom of your pan. It's starting to get a little bit of boil there. A little bit of bubbles. Up to 207. And I, like I said, I'll share this recipe online, but make sure I had all the right ingredient measurements as I said them, but like I said, I, it's got a little flustered. I couldn't find my candy thermometer. I have no idea where it's went to. So I guess it's back to Amazon and get another one delivered. Now, as soon as we get to 235, we're gonna stir in the white chocolate chips, the marshmallow fluff, and the vanilla. As you can see my vanilla here, this is something you should be making right now if you wanna give it away for Christmas as gifts. I have a link I'll put down below in my uh, description and you need to do it now if you're going to do it. That way it has time to set up. You can do it in an instant pot and it takes about two weeks to come to full flavor. Mine, this and I made last year, and this is the last jar I have. So I guess I need to start making some more of that too. We're about to 218, 220. You're good. As soon as we get to 235, I'm going to pull it off of here and quickly add those other ingredients. We're at 227. I'm hoping this works. I really wonder where my candy thermometer went. It's, I use it all holiday season long, making different kinds of candies, divinities. I'm going to have to find it because I'm not making divinity without my candy thermometer. to about 231, 32. It smells delicious. It smells like this pumpkin spice is gone. We're at 234. Okay, I'm gonna stop there. 235. Okay, we're at 235. I'm pulling it off so it doesn't cook any further. I'm going to add in the white chocolate chips. A teaspoon of vanilla. I like vanilla, I'm gonna add a little more. There's one teaspoon of one and a half. I'm gonna add in, well, I'm gonna do the pecans last. I'm um, gonna get this all out, so I'm getting it all over me. Marshmallow fluff is such a good thing to use in different recipes, it's so easy. It melts a lot faster than marshmallows. And it lasts forever. Okay. Get that inside the pan. All right. Now, you're going to want to stir this just until the white chocolate chips milk it is already thickening. I am switching from the whisk to a wooden spoon. You want to get this done quickly. Looks like everything's pretty well still with some white chocolate chips, I can see. You're not more than stuff. I'm gonna put it back on me just get a little bit warm. I'm hoping that thermometer works. So I hate to waste all this, but I have it already out. I wanted to get made. And I thought I'd experiment and see if they work. Sometimes that's how you find things out. Okay, now let's add in the pecans. You can use walnuts, you can use any kind of nut you like. I just prefer pecans, especially around the holidays, everything that I make is pecans. Okay, next, let's 
Let's just pull this over here, get everything out of our way. We're going to pour this right in here, let it set up. You know what? I'm thinking if those white chocolate chips are little pieces in there, that might be good in the pumpkin fudge. But that's what's also going to help it set up. So that's why you want to melt it. Okay. Out of there. Make sure it's kind of flat. Save this to taste later. I'll set this aside and let it cool. And when it's all done, I take it out. We'll be back and show you what it looks like. Okay, this is what I have been waiting for all day long. Our pecan. Pumpkin fudge is out. I cheated. I put it in the refrigerator for a couple hours. Could have left it just on the counter, but I wanted to firm it up quickly. Now I'm going to show you, so putting this paper in here, exactly what it does. Yeah, it looks right out. And it's perfectly clean, and nothing's crumbling. Over here. It's backing down. Cheating. That is good. Okay, good night. Wow, pumpkin flavor is really good. Put a few of these. You know, you want to cut them very large. Remember, we put brown sugar in here, we put white sugar in here. These are very sweet. There we go. This is round. As you can see, these just come right apart. You can store these in a sealed container. I usually keep mine in the refrigerator so they stay a little bit longer. Keep them out, they'll start sweating and the sugar might start crystallizing. There you go. Con pumpkin fudge. Give it a try, hope you enjoy it.